got the number one world champion, Mr. Gerd Rist. Gerd, my very first question to you is, your first impressions of this circuit? I did some practice before, three laps. I think it's, it's one of the best grass pumps I've ever, ever ride. Watch Anderson Crumb that have gone back to the pits. He now comes to the line. Will he be the challenger to Gerd Rist in this first race? Can any of the others get the break on the start line into that first turn? Hold everybody else up. Impressions of the circuit here this afternoon. Looks good. Looks bloody good. <laughs> Looks bloody good. I think that sums it up well, doesn't it? As they get underway, there's problems for Glenn Huff, as I say that. The rest of the field go by me. Steve Smith and Lee Grinch.
to close up though, Rob Wilson going for yet another win, leads, he's gone wide, Ivor Matthews is in second at the moment, Glenn Huff has got through into third place in front of John Escock. from Ivor Matthews in second. Glenn Huff getting closer and closer to Ivor Matthews. There's one more lap to go. Simon Wall looks over his shoulder. He's seen Glenn Huff there. Sure he'll be indicating the right made a very good start but this time Gary Jackson has gone with him John Horsey is on the inside of Gary Jackson as they all get to that first bend together well it is rustling and Graham Ashby that has got away so they're in the position they were before it was stopped of him and Richard Thomas at the back John Horsey goes after Gary Jackson Russelling gets away from them again though. Can John Halsey take Gary Jackson in this top corner? He's very, very close to him. Works around on the inside. John Halsey moves up the back straight, going very, very quickly indeed now. Rob Wilson trying to find a way through. Mark Edwards is now trying to work his way through as well. So Mark Edwards in fourth place, Rob Wilson in fifth place. And Russelling's in problems. Russelling pulls out with problems at the pit bend. It means that John Halsey's now leading it. Gary Jackson comes back at him. Mark Edwards is going through as well as they go into this top bend. Gary Jackson locks it up going into that top bend. He comes to first in second place. Mark Edwards is back at him. There's Gary Jackson that takes it. Mark Edwards takes second. John Halsey in third. They are back with a vengeance. Well, whatever the problem was, terrific disappointment for Russelling. But what a finale it meant for us. Right, back out they come then for the restart of race number five. Obviously, uh, Bradley Kite unable to take his place. I think Vince Kinch will be annoyed with that. They got an absolute fire from the outside of the grid. It was very well in the, much in the lead when that race was stopped. So it looks to be going without Bradley Kite in the restart of uh, race number five, third leg of the 500 solos. Just waiting for Vince Kinch to settle. One for the outside of Steve Brady to run on the outside. They're on the bench for Steve Brady. Number five, number four. Probably from the average door makes a good start. But number 22, that's 20 man wheel. Each of that top for Steve Brady to make it a big sweep round right the outside. Vince Kinch got the second and Richard Hall making a big move round the outside to go through into second place is Brayford leads him and Hall in second is Kinchin in third that's a top three as they hit that pit corner for the first time it's Brayford running mid track Richard Hall trying to get through on the inside almost the that's the top five they move to the back straight once again it's still Brayford with the advantage but Hall trying to close the gap there in second place he's still pulling away from Kinchin in third and Kinchin now coming under tremendous pressure that third place diving through on the inside of Vince Kinchin Bridget Hall trying to come right round the edge of Steve Brayford. They're locked together now. They're going to play that. Brayford on the inside. Hall trying to get round the outside. Stop it there. They're going to come through the third place. They're changing in four. Richard spinning five. And Richard Hall again using every inch of track trying to get round the edge of Steve Brayford. They're absolutely locked together. Halfway down that back straight. Brayford on the inside. Richard Hall coming round the outside. Stop it there. They're going to come through the third place. They're changing in four. Richard spinning five. And Richard Hall again using every inch of track trying to get round the edge of Steve Brayford. They're absolutely locked together. Halfway down that back straight. Brayford on the inside. Richard Hall coming round the outside. Spectacular action between these two again. Richard Hall using every inch of track. He's got round the edge of Steve Brayford. They're going to move on the four. Then it's all over the place. And 
Williams got the third place, Lynchon is in four, Richard Smith now coming under pressure for that fifth place position, as Richard Hall slowly but surely is pulling away from Steve Brayford now as they go, down into the pits corner and four the full time, Randy Van Williams got the third place position, spectacular right there by Richard Hall, Richard Hall is in five from Steve Brayford in second place, Randy Van Williams got the third place, Lynchon in four, Chatteru is in five, Richard Smith in six, and Dave Mears in seventh place. But what a terrific race there between Richard Hall and Steve Brayford for three of the four laps. They were virtually locked shoulder to shoulder. And let's not forget that's Richard Hall's first grass track of the season. Spectacular action for the Peterborough Speedway star there in race number five. And we turn our attention back to the 500 sidecars, but we're moving on to race ten. Out for the second time this afternoon, Sean Harvey and Danny Hogg. Who had a second place first time out. We've already seen Leicester Goodwin. We're looking for the best place finishers then. Number eight, um, Scott Dunn and Adam Young had a really good start, but they ended up in fourth place first time out. Number nine, Sean Harvey also uh, had to work hard for his fourth place. Indeed, as they get underway, they go into that first turn. We've got a duplication in the program there as uh, we've got two Sean Harveys for some reason. Wilfred Detz is number nine. So there's a misprint there. And it is Wilfred Detz that's got the lead. <laughs> 72, Sean Harvey and Danny Hogg sitting in that second place. But a very, very close second as they close right up on Wilfred and move down that back straight. Wilfred Detz and Denny Detz. From Holland going well in the lead at the moment, but Sean Harvey wants some of that as he gets very, very close once again. Now pit number eight, Scott Dunn and Adam Young going better this time. They're watching what's going on in front of them. They're sitting in that third place, but all eyes I'm sure on that lead is Sean Harvey again tries to get it from the Dutchman, Wilfred Detz. And Sean's elected to go around the outside this time. It's a long, long way round. He's going to have to be quick, but he's leading. Hello, number 72. Sean Harvey and Danny Hogg. Oh, number 9, Wilfred Detz and Denny Detz. Oh, they do look as if they're going to hang on to that second place. But this is a good ride once again from Sean Harvey. He'll see the checker flag this time as he comes towards us. He looks over his shoulder, he knows he's done enough. Sean Harvey takes it. Wilfred Detz gets second place. Five as we quickly move over to the second leg rides for the 500 solo. Thank you very much, Jim. On the line then for race number 11, the start of the second leg of the uh, solos. Mathis Corver, of course, a replacement in this race. Number 11, impressive second place. Mathis Corver, of course, a replacement in this race. Number 11, impressive second place. Mathis Corver, of course, a replacement in this race. Number 11, impressive second place. Mathis Corver, of course, a replacement in this race. Number 11, impressive second place. Mathis Corver, of course, a replacement in this race. Number 11, impressive second place. Mathis Corver, of course, a replacement in this race. Number 11, impressive second place. Mathis Corver, of course, a replacement in this race. Number 11, impressive second place. Mathis Corver, of course, a replacement in this race. Number 11, impressive second place. Mathis Corver, of course, a replacement in this race. Number 11, impressive second place. Mathis Corver, of course, a replacement in this race. Number 11, impressive second place. Mathis Corver, of course, a replacement in this race. Number 11, impressive second place. Mathis Corver, of course, a replacement in this race. Number Whoever gets back to third place, a real sort of there. Mitch Cotton found himself one for last, but trying to work his way to field now as they come to complete. Richard Smith holding that second place, Kruger's got the third, that's the top three, Mitch Cotton. They're up in that fifth place mission and almost a close in there. Second and third, and they went down the back straight once again. That's an outbound wheel to pull away the front. It's Kruger still pushing hard in that third place mission. Richard Smith hanging on to the second place mission. As it's Van Wheeler leads going down that back straight once again then. It's still Kruger again trying to find a way through on the inside with Richard Smith grimly hanging on to that second place as they move on to lap four. This time Van Wheeler leads to He's trying to get back round the exit, Kruger right between these two. As Van Wheel's got it, solely for the front, they're moving to the pitch corner, further for no time. It's Randy Van Wheel that comes to the pick up the winning line. That's Kruger gets to second place, which is third. Then Phillips in four, Mitch Cotton five, Steve Brayford in sixth place. 
Four Philippine engine number two, Manfred Knapp, and final number 14, Shay Colvin, who completely missed the start of race number 11. Spectacular high-speed action there again in race number 11. As we now move over to the third leg of the 500cc solo, it's starting to get itself sorted out. Thank you very much, Jim. Live into the third leg of the solo, go ahead, got in for the engine back in five minutes. Start Jonas Cole McCorby leads into that top corner. Mitch Godden taking the big amble right around the outside. Godden gets round the outside of Cole McCorby to move through into the leading position. Godden leads him to McCorby in second. Sturgeon in third. Lewis Dillon making the move around the outside to go from the third place where they're getting Martin Sturgeon to fourth as they come out of that pits calling for a completely healthy lap. Then it's Godden who leads him to Cole McCorby in second. Sturgeon in fourth. in five. And the Rudolph in six. It's Mod in seven. That's the top seven as they go to the back straight once again. And Cole McCorby again trying to squeeze through on the inside of Godden to Bodden to the pipe bike advantage into that pitch corner once again Godden takes a wide line Colin McCorby a much tighter line but Godden's got the speed round the outside but Colin McCorby is definitely closing up tremendous race for Colin they go in that top corner once again and Godden has gone really wide that top corner Colin McCorby's got four on the inside Godden again coming back round the outside fabulous action between these two as Godden leads with Colin McCorby in second place and on the back in third is Lewis Tenham the reserve coming into this race for Jamie Rogers Colin McCorby Again, trying to get back through the Gordon comes with a real quick line round the outside. Colin McCorby inside. Here he is, Gordon again. Back round the outside. Fabulous action between these two. They're absolutely locked together. They go to the back straight once again. And Colin McCorby again. God dies back through inside Gordon. And now Gordon comes back to the inside line. The checkered flag is made ready. Colin McCorby gets it. Mitch Gordon gets the second. Fabulous stuff between those two. Lewis Tennant is third and cross lining of a third and fourth. Then he got then go with Hickmott, then Manfred Knapp and Polly Dave Mears in 8th place. What a fantastic race there between Mitch Gordon and Jonas Kalmakorpi. They pass and repass so many times. Absolutely fantastic high speed grass track racing. Tremendous stuff between those two. Oh indeed, we uh, remind you that in the second leg ride that looked to be a very serious machinery blow up for Duncan Tolest. He hasn't come out in this race 24. Mark Warren is on that inside gate, you can see there. Oh, indeed, on correction there, that is Peter Lloyd, I'm told, right on the inside, of course it is. Peter Lloyd and Terry Madley, so there will be no replacement. Five riders only going in race 24. He's made a good start from the outside, remember how to win second time out, Matt Brumbo had a win first time out, he's in second place at the moment, closes up on John Halsey as he comes out of that pit bend, but it is John Halsey and Jason Glennie that get away. Matt Brumbo and Andy Wilson sitting there in second, this is a much better ride from uh, well, pit number one, James Rogers and Damien Jane. They look to have got things sorted a bit better for their third ride. And they sit in third place at the moment, but looking to grab second as they go around the outside of Matt from Roller. Matt responds once again and comes back at them. He's got back into that second place, but he now knows he's got a fight on his hands. John Halsey and Jason Glennie still staying out there in front, getting away from the rest of the field. I think all I can see on that second place as again, uh, you can see that the challenge is coming from James Rogers. He's again got alongside him, and this time he's got the advantage, and James Rogers moves into that second place, and quickly he closes on John Halsey. He's gone very, very wide on that bottom turn. Matt from Roller might be able to get back at him. He doesn't do so. And James Rogers and James James stay in second place, and they really have closed on John Halsey and Jason Glenny. Oh, John must have heard him there. He knows he's got competition. He pulls away going down that back straight. One more corner to negotiate as he comes round that bottom turn. He'll see the chequered flag this time as he comes towards us. And that's his second of the afternoon. That's a good win for John Halsey and Jason Benny. On to race number 28. It's uh, Lewis Denham for the missing uh, Jamie Rogers, of course, as Tim knows. But comes back for the takes to move back into that number two gate of position. Way the Jim Nobs are settling gate for the two four race number 28. 
Fantastic drama and how great to three, see three English riders dominating the top three places in the 2006 Bonfire Burnup. Calvin told me before at an interview at the start of the meeting he would be content to make the final and this is his last ever appearance. Not only has he made the final, he's completely dominated the final, made a superstar, pulled away over the first couple of laps. Tremendous dogfight for the minor place, then allowed him to pull away. So Calvin Taylor is the 2006 Bonfire Burnup winner.